Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, we're gonna do the test flight of the carbon fiber uh, pet G that we print out the main gear. So I already got the carbon fiber gear already replaced. I did that off camera. Here is the original. And here is the carbon fiber. Uh, the difference I noticed between the two, this one is a lot stiffer then my part, mine's a little bit more flexible, but that's okay. Um, think in the near future, I might increase the end fill of the filament, but as of right now, we're gonna test the regular uh, stock settings that came with the print design from the creator. Okay, so how we're gonna test this in the field, we're gonna do a bench test here with no props to make sure that there's no shavings or the material just degrades due to the stress and load and heat. So we're gonna do that in the house before we take off. And then the second part of the video is gonna be flying around in the air, probably a hover. And then the third one is me flying it around just to see how it is. And then we'll come back to the shop and talk about the results. So further ado, I'm gonna get this bad boy back into the Bell 206. And I just want to show you. And honestly, it fits perfectly. There's no issues. No grinding, no nothing. So, so far, so good. Alright guys, this is test one without the main blades. We're going to do the motor start up, get up to 70%. That's usually where I fly at for about two minutes make sure the gear is sound and good. Okay, so I did notice that it's un like it could just be my metal um, whatever that piece is called. <laughs> well, so it looks like the main gear held up. I don't see any abrasion marks. Okay, that was just dirt. So far, so good. Don't see any chips. All right. So there's no cracking, no chips. So, so far that test was good. Besides the gear kind of going up and down but the gear is not bent. So I'm not sure why it's doing the little wave motion, but it could just be something simple. Or I always had a bit and I just finally just realized that. So we'll see. All right, so for the next test, we are going to put on the blades and do a dry test first. And then we're gonna to go to the RC film or my helicopter flying spot, and this is where we're gonna fly it. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so this is the test two, still on the ground, but we have the blades on now, and we're gonna run it for another two minutes. But don't worry, these videos will be fast forwarded, of course. Let's zoom. Let's see what's going on with the helicopter. <clears throat> right. 
So far, so good. I see no chips inside, no shavings, no nothing. So, looks pretty good. The teeth are not damaged. I don't see any cracks in the teeth. guys I'm trying to do this with my phone <laughs> with blades but yeah so far so good i don't see any like damage or wear and tear <sighs> there might be some layer adhesion All right, well, looks like everything's checked out pretty good. So, all right, so I'll catch you guys at the field. And all right, so we just finished the outside test that you guys saw just a second ago. Now I'm putting everything back together, but I did notice something. You see those little imprints? That's from the metal gear. So... By the looks of it, it's pretty much on all of them. And I'm wondering if that's going to cause any issues or whatnot. But when I look on the other side, the gear slits are doing just fine. So we're still going to take it up. Um, maybe in the near future, we'll increase this wall thickness. And probably increase the infill to about 75%. Uh, but further ado, let's get this helicopter back together. And we'll do the final test, the flight. Okay, guys. I have everything set up, ready to go for the test flight. Remote ID is working. Um, we have a 3,000 milliamp battery, which gives me about 5 to 8 minutes of flight. The head speed is at 70%. Or 75 is usually why I fly my flywing helicopters. So, everything looks good. Uh, you saw we did the last pre-flight check at the house or on my bench to make sure there was no uh, damage to the gear. But we did notice some imprints, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, but further ado, let's get this baby in the air. quiet all right so here's the hover test let's bring it closer so i probably do need to update my gps but so far it's doing pretty good so all right all right let's get in the middle and start flying around So, I don't know if the gear is more quiet. It makes the helicopter more quieter than the standard. But that might be something we need to look at.
That is quiet. Holy cow. I think it's the gear that actually made it a little bit more quieter. And I wasn't even trying that. Oops, don't come closer to me. <laughs> Look at that hover. That is quiet. So I accidentally dropped my canopy and I cracked it and there's a hole in it. So you might be able to see that little hole right there. There it is. <laughs> but yeah, um, I like the gear. I didn't expect it to sound so quiet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We have a failure. <laughs> oh, man. That was a close call. So, I think the main gear failed. So, let's take a peek. <laughs> okay, guys. So, we're back at the bench. And you saw that lovely little failure. So, the good news is, if your gear ever fails in midair and you hear that winding down, you have about three seconds almost. Three to four seconds to get it on the ground, but you also got to put your rudder correction so you can try to auto rotate auto rotation down as best you can, even though you can't really auto rotate with these brushless motors, um, but at least it gives you a fighting chance. So when we're doing the outside bench test before we've flown, those other little videos, we did notice there was some uh, dents in the gear where the teeth were actually biting in. Um, it could just, that is a good indication that it is going to fail, um, it, and this material is too, uh, soft or brittle for this metal piece right here on the main motor. So this was actually just eating this a piece. So you do need a stronger material. So I will say this PETG carbon fiber is not the right material for this application. Now, could we actually try to see if it is? A um, couple options is that we increase the infill to from 50 to 75 or 100 percent, and we increase the wall thickness maybe from a three to a four. But overall, the failure is pretty much this bottom half where the teeth make connection with that metal. So, yeah. And then if you look inside the aircraft, it just shavings everywhere. So that kind of tells me that this material is very weak, um, brittle against that metal. So overall, um, Pet G is a failure, um, but I did learn something new. Um, that sound when the gear is about to fail down and what it sounds like. So in the near future, I'm ready to go and I was still prepared. So I was able to get it on the ground safely. And for the next material, we're going to, we're probably going to use the same settings, but we're going to have a stronger material. And the next material is going to be, I believe it is going to be ABS glass fiber. And this is going to be the next one from bamboo. It's another one. Like I said, it was on sale. And I'm going to start drying that so we can get that gear built. And we can talk about it. But yeah, <laughs> if you find this video very interesting, that little uh, crash interesting, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it shows me that you actually care and I will happily continue putting my helicopters at risk. So you guys don't have to put it at risk and lose your birds. I will do that for you because <laughs> I'm a very nice guy. <laughs> but so yeah. Hope you enjoy the video and have a good one and safe flying.